Well, Bruce, welcome to the show. I am excited because we get to talk about something that I know is a mystery to a lot of people getting into live stream, which is the whole audio component. You have a unique uh, angle into this world of live streaming. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the audio gear and all, all the things that you use to bring instruments and your voice crystal clear into your live streams. But first, uh, take us take us to your show. What do you do? What do you live stream about? And uh, where do you go when you do that? Well, I, I have two main shows uh, that are live. So the, the first one happens on Facebook. That's generally a daily show. Um, and that, um, you know, I have a, a subscriber base on my, my fan page, uh, which is just Bruce Gregory. And, um, and those followers just come out. And basically, it's, a, it's all about jazz, really. That's kind of the show. It's called At Jazz, live with Bruce Gregory. Um, and um, there I basically play tunes. It, it, that particular show is kind of in support of everything I'm doing on the, on the outside of that show. So mm -hmm. if I have a particular set of lessons that I've released on YouTube or uh, the, other, the other live stuff I'm doing, I try to play tunes that I play, basically I'll play a song and uh, or, or a bunch of songs for around an hour. And uh, what it's turned into is kind of like a, a conversation show. So, you know, we have the same subscribers coming back all the time. They want to tell me about their day. They want to talk about certain things. So it's kind of turned into kind of like a, a coffee table kind of gig. <laughs> Well, what, when, when did you start it? Let's go back to just like, what inspired you to start this live show? And, and when did, when did you press go on it? Well, the live streaming, uh, well, let me back up. The YouTube channel started, you know, probably eight or nine years ago. And, and really I didn't do much with it, to be honest with you, because, um, you know, I'm pretty much a live performance artist. You know, I there was a day when I would work in the studios and do that work, but that work's kind of dried up and it, there's not much of it. And if there is, you're working in your home studio, you're not going to a studio, uh, which is what I do now when I get that kind of work. Um, so the YouTube channel was just kind of like, a, you know, oh, look, I played at this place and I'll throw a video up of me playing, you know, and six people would look at it and go, great. And, um, and my Facebook, uh, was just kind of marketing. And then, you know, we had the virus hit. <laughs> and so that's really kind of what prompted me to say, well, you know, um, I'm not going to be playing live. So I'm going to start to think about how I can push music out in an electronic form. And that was kind of the, that was the real kickoff. I'll be honest with you. I probably streamed two or three times pre-March of this mm -hmm. year. How did you uh, kind of narrow that in? Like, how did you come to that realization that your first couple episodes were just too much fumbling around because there was just too much stuff? And if I just focused on these three things, they would have the biggest impact. Like, how did you come to that realization? Yeah, yeah. The, the old football mentality, man. Going back and watching the film, you know, going back and going, yeah, this this is no good. And, and look, I'm just sitting there for like 27 27 seconds just looking into dead air trying to find some notes when I should be more prepared for for a while right after that point I started to kind of you know make kind of a a mini script you know and uh and that that worked but again um it wasn't too organic for me because I'm a you know my business is improvisation you know uh, and as an improviser you know this amount of material and that might take you outside that little box that you've created for yourself. But um, really you're drawing from there. And, uh, and over time it just becomes, um, you know, automatic. And so, you know, it, it, it got to the point where I was like, I need to draw on what I know best and kind of try to pull that in to, uh, to a show. So it, it, it really isn't much different than what I do live. The only difference in this thing is I'm sitting down, you know, I sit down, 
that was kind of a, a new thing for me because I don't normally sit when I play. And um, so it was kind of like, okay, how do I sit? And, you know, I, I had to get a new chair, you know, it's just little things. And each night I would go back and look at it, the video and say, yeah, I could probably do that. I could probably do that. Now I do it on my live feeds. On every live feed, I go back and listen to it. But I'm more listening to um, what I'm doing wrong musically, you know. <laughs> so it's you know it's just competing against myself basically you, you shared a couple of things already and so i was gonna ask you like for someone thinking about starting a music-based show do you have any pointers you've already shared one big uh, idea which is simply like treat it as if you would a normal live show so the idea of like don't show up too early uh, this is, this is like whatever you do in a live setting, carry that to a live video and it, it kind of transfers over. Are there any other pointers you'd give to someone who's thinking about starting a live based, uh, a music based live stream show? Yeah. I, I mean, I think, I think one of the things is to, is to keep it really simple. You know, I, I've seen, a have seen a lot of peers. I have a lot of friends in this business and guys that want to do it. And I had, you know, one guy, you know, who basically, you know, set up a whole amphitheater kind of setup. And and that's cool if that's your thing and you can pull it off. But I think in the world of streaming, um, you know, and music collaboration, if you have more than one person playing, um, we're not there yet as a technology. You know, we I think we want to be there. I think it's getting to be there. I've seen like whole streamed ensembles and some of them come across really well. And some of them are marginal. So I think it's like you've got to keep it down to the bare what you really need and focus on practice. You know, it's the same thing I tell my students, practice it. You know, so, you know, I, I would say, you know, you talked about that first show. I probably went privately to YouTube six or seven times to get the video at least to where I could say, all right, I could watch that. The audio to where I could listen to that. Rather than just going, this is cool. Let's hit play and, and play, and then mm -hmm. you know, five percent, eighty percent of your show is, you know, distorted and you know, cutting in and out, like you said. And and uh, I think those are the the two big things. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that. How how are you achieving that? Because you're, the way you do it is kind of awesome. It's it's it's. I, I'm already like thinking in the back of my head, like, cool, now I'm going to adopt this for my own video based live stream. So walk us through your, the audio side of your tech setup. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. I only have two pipes in and they basically go to Ecamm. Of course, Ecamm um, says it's a stereo program, but really when I think of Ecamm, it's just, and when I say a pipe, I mean a pathway. So it's one pipe out. So there's a left and right with Ecamm but it's really, you're only getting one feed out. So it's just like if you plug your headphones in to your laptop, you know, um, you don't have two different signals. You just have a left and right and one cord that goes into your, your, your laptop. Um, I use a product by Universal Audio and uh, it's just an audio interface. So there's audio interfaces that have been around, you know, for home use since the early 90s. And, uh, and you can get a ton of them. There's Focusrite, you know, there's so many different ones. Uh, Apogee is another great one. But the cool thing about Universal Audio, their products are not really that much more than any other audio interface. But what it does is it basically is an external device that plugs into your laptop. Um, if you're using a Mac, it's gonna be Thunderbolt 2 or 3. Um, they do make a USB-C version of it, but the Thunderbolt is definitely the way to go. It's faster, process, it processes the audio quickly, and that does make a difference. Um, so it's just in lieu of your sound card, essentially. So you're not using your laptop speakers. Um, you don't need monitors. You know, you, you can use your laptop speakers. You can buy external monitors. So you, could, you can really tailor the sound the way you want it. The advantage of it is, is that with UA is they have an electronic mixer that's on your laptop. It looks like a big console mixer you'd see in the studio. And you can plug as many devices into that mixer that you want. 
and separate the sound. You can mix it. You can use compression on the voice. You can use a little reverb on your instrument, a ton of their plugins. And so you can really get that sound and uh, tailor it exactly the way you want it. So if I, if I had another musician here with me and um, you know, they could have their own channel, you as the Ecamm listener or the audience, you have no idea. You, I've done my work and mixed it on the back end, and you're getting the feed like you would when you plug those headphones in and, and that the mixed you know, iTunes audio or something like that. As far as the other live stream gear, like cameras, lights, uh, what are you using to make your show happen? Yeah, L lights, I would like to have better lights. I, I just have, I have a one box light that's off to the side of me and a uh, big box light and uh, nothing crazy. In fact, it wasn't even my, my, my light. <laughs> I inherited it from my wife. She just, she has a a video kind of thing she does and uh and she has two of them and so um we i had two and experimented with them and it was just too much and then i just have a couple different room lights and that's it so it doesn't seem so um you know so stark and uh so really cheap on the lights i didn't even purchase those uh and camera i'm just using a lumix g7 point shoot and, uh, you know, when I do my, um, my YouTube videos, it's all 4k, but I, I run 1080, you know, even though Facebook really doesn't you know, produce it that much. I found that's kind of the sweet spot to, you know, maybe get a little bit better quality if I go live. So you have a number, you know, you, you went from 700 shows. Yeah. You know, in-person shows to yeah. uh, uh, online yeah. and so walk us through like more, maybe some of the business side of this like how have you found going live either as a tool to book more of these private private shows to build your audience to grow your subscription like how have you found that uh, in the last couple of months um I think it's I think it's um it's kind of an in it's been interesting I, I will say that um I've done live work for so long that if I were to fly to your city and I'd said, Hey, you know, I'm coming up to see you, um, you know, for a week, I could probably get myself two or three gigs. You know, that's how easy it is really for me to book live work. Not just because, you know, wow, I'm so great. It's just, I've been doing it so long, you know? And, um, you know, and it's, uh, I, I try to give people exactly what I tell them I'm going to give them. So on the live front, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a solo jazz player in 2020. Uh, I'm, that's not at the top of everybody's desire list, you know, particularly if they're going to go to see live entertainment, which they generally are not doing as much anymore anyway. So, um, you know, I'm just kind of like, I try to make it really like a live show. I try to make it really easy for people to work with me so that, you know, I can get repeat work. That's how. I've survived. It's all about repeat at the same place. For the live scene, um, uh, for the stream scene, uh, you know, I didn't miss a day streaming from the time I started, which is say March 19th was a good day, probably until June 17th. That was the first day I think I took off. So it was probably like, a good three months every single day I stream. And, um, you know, I had my peers, you know, just going underground, not playing at all. And I was like, you know what, man, I'm going to keep bringing music to people as much as I can. And I wasn't, that wasn't as a goal to earn any income from it. It was just really kind of to bring music to folks and, and also kind of keep myself from going insane, you know, cause I'm not playing. And I just spent, you know, the better part of my entire life, if not my entire life. I mean, I started doing this when I was 14 years old, you know, so it's like, you know, I've never done anything else. I don't know how to do anything else. And, um, 
you know, so I started doing that. And then someone had the idea of um, saying, well, you know, you should, you know, design a redesign. I had a website, but like redesign it, you know, to kind of support this. And, and then all of a sudden, probably within two or three days, it all kind of started to happen as far as me getting ideas about how to take what I was doing previously and make it more electronic and, uh, and just being committed to it, you know? So I, I, you know, I was really committed to kind of doing the YouTube channel and, you know, that went from, I might've had two subscribers to now we're already at 5,000. That's not a huge channel, but it's still 5,000 subscribers. You know, I'm still surprised 5,000 people like jazz, <laughs> you know, so, and want to listen to it. I want to listen to me play it, you know? So I'm just like, wow, this is great. Where can, uh, where can people find more about you? Yeah. So the, 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 the main thing, uh, of course, uh, we have the YouTube channel, which is just YouTube, you know, Bruce Gregory. And, uh, of course there's two sites. There's Bruce Gregory TV. That's a subscriber site. Uh, so that is, uh, my main educational site along with that. If you go to that site, you also get to Bruce Gregory.com. You can go to either, or they bring you in and out. Uh, they kind of do similar things, except the Bruce Gregory uh, .com site gives me a little bit more flexibility. Uh, and, uh, folks want to, uh, work with me individually or have a little bit more tailored needs, uh, that's, uh, you know, that's the site to go to. And of course, facebook.com. Cool. Well, Hey, appreciate your time. Appreciate you sharing your story and uh, keep doing what you're doing.